away from the grimy clubs. Four people in the back, now they lining up. Hi everybody, my name's Joe K. It's just another day in the underground. Today I'm gonna to be interviewing one of my personal favorite underground hip hop artists, and that is Loose Logic. Uh, he's probably one of the most slept on artists from hip hop fans and other underground rappers. Uh, Loose Logic, tell us a little bit about where you come from and how you got your name. I come from uh, Southern California, Orange County. Kind of moved around a lot. Uh, I lived in Hollywood. Uh, when I was going to uh, school for studio engineering at Musicians Institute, uh, lived in Glendale, uh, Burbank, working in studios out there. Moved to Lamita, Long Beach area, and uh, found my way back down to Orange County. The story about how I got my name is kind of kind of funny. It's a it's a little uninspiring, I suppose. Um, you know, I. Uh, used to play basketball, uh, this was back when I was in high school, before I ever decided that I was really going to be a rapper or an artist or a musician of any sort. And we were on our way to a basketball game on the bus and uh, you know we were all talking about hip hop and, and things like that. One of my buddies, uh, his older brother was in an underground uh, rap group called The Escape Artists. And uh, so we were kicking around names and stuff. I was like, you know what, if I was ever a rapper, I would be called loose logic I, that's what I would call myself and if I ever had a rap group I would call it white noise um which I guess is already a group now I, I don't know but uh yeah I mean that's that's really how it came about the the meaning behind it um if you define it is you know free from binding the principles of reasoning or the binding principles of reasoning however you want to flip that um basically just you know thinking outside of the box, um, coming up with new ideas and not, not letting a, a certain format um, or mold define who you are as an artist. And, and that's really what I try to live up to and, and the name kind of defines that. I definitely always find it interesting uh, finding out where people first get their names from. Another thing that I always find kind of funny is uh, finding out how old they were when they wrote their first rap and what their first rap was. Loose Logic, do you remember how old you were when you did that? And do you remember any of the bars from that rap? And would you mind sharing those with us? Um, when I first, when I first started writing, um, man, I was in high school, senior year, was probably about 18. It was close to when I graduated. The first song I ever wrote was uh, this song called The OC Anthem. And uh, I, I honestly can't, it's been so long, I can't remember anything about it as far as bars or anything like that. Um, I know that it was over a, a Bone Thugs beat. Um, can't remember which beat, to be honest with you. It's, it's been so long. I have it saved somewhere on a CD before external hard drives were in regular use. Tell us about some of your musical influences uh, both in hip hop and, and outside of hip hop and in other genres that really influence a lot of your music that you make? Um, as far as influences uh, with hip hop, I mean obviously Tupac, um, Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, the old school West Coast artists, I was very influenced by them. Um, Bone Thugs and Harmony, uh, those were some of my early influences that I really enjoyed. Um, and, and you know got inspiration from it and kind of fueled to help mold the style that I've, I've come with um, as of now people like Tech 9 um, all of Slaughterhouse I, especially Joe Budden and uh, Royce I mean it's, it's, it's crazy just the stuff that they come up with and I, I like to uh, I like to be able to, to match that or do better because that kind of writing really influences me um, outside of hip hop, man, there, there's a long list, dude. Um, Pink Floyd, one of my favorite bands of all time. Uh, Skid Row, they're like an 80s metal, hair metal band. Um, but Sebastian Bach is an incredible singer and some of the songs and the stories that they tell are awesome. Um, I like this band called Nickel Creek, which is like a bluegrass band, which you probably wouldn't expect. Uh, coming from a rapper, but uh, they have some really incredible music. The harmonies are 
I would say rival some of the things that the Eagles have done. Um, it, it just goes all over the place, man. Rolling Stones, uh, John Legend, uh, the possibilities are endless as far as outside of hip-hop. U2, I'm a great fan of. Um, Neil Diamond had uh, one album that just completely influenced me as far as storytelling goes and, and creating an emotion. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, I have a vast musical influence. I listen to lots of different types of music. Uh, and, and they all help to create the sound that, you know, the, you and the fans eventually get to hear from me. Now, early in your career, you made a song called The OC Anthem. Tell us all a little bit about that, how that came to fruition, and how that just kind of spread like wildfire. Yeah, man, like, like I mentioned earlier, The OC Anthem, that was like the first song I ever wrote. Um, it was me and, and one of my buddies from high school, his name was Joe Welbert. <laughs> He went by Slip Change, which he played baseball, so I guess that's like a, a pitch or something. I'm not sure exactly, but we started out together doing that. And um, the reason behind it was uh, one of our other buddies, uh, actually two of them, that played basketball as well, did a song over a Puff Daddy beat from uh, the Puff Daddy and the Family album. And I listened to it, and I was like, dude, we could do better than that, man. So that was really the, the advent of, of where I started. That, that's where it all came to fruition. And um, the way that it was able to spread was it was on the early stages of Napster. So we uploaded it to Napster and uh, we just started going to, you know, as high school kids do, going to different parties and stuff like that. And uh, chicks from other schools had it in their Winamp players and the, uh, on the, the playlist. If you remember what Winamp, Winamp was, it was a, a big thing back then, I guess. Um, and we'd be at the party and they'd just be playing. And I'm, I'm like, dude, that's us, bro. And, and they're like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So um, that's, that's where it all started. And that's how it spread. Um, and uh, we, we moved forward from there and started making our own beats and stuff and, and, and doing, uh, our own music and trying to be original with it. Uh, I would play the the melodies and stuff because I played piano. He would do the the drums uh, on Fruity Loops when it first came. It was like Fruity Loops One or whatever version that was. Um, but yeah, it, it was a good thing. And and not for a while after that did, did we ever see the same type of success as that first song, which is ironic that my first song spread and got my name out there locally at least. One thing that I don't think a lot of people realize about you is the fact that you used to battle. Now how did you get into the battle scene and who was one of your favorite people to, that you've ever battled? The way that I got into the battle scene was um, I started with, with live freestyle battles. Uh, I would go to different spots locally uh, and just sign up for battle. It's crazy man, you know, getting on stage doing it in front of uh, a front of a bunch of people when you're freestyling it's off the top so you're feeding off the crowd and you're talking about stuff that's happening in the crowd and the way that people react to the person that you're battling and so that was a was a very good learning experience um it progressed into the world of online battling with uh the advent of certain sites like rapmusic.com being competitive in nature wanted to learn all that i could in order to win because i didn't want to lose you know what i mean so i started studying poetic devices by you know things that shakespeare used um and honed in on certain things like idioms um allegories uh anastrophes chiasmuses um different you know literary devices homonyms um uh, hyperboles whatever i could use and just do that to destroy whoever I'm battling um, along with you know the the name flips and and personals and stuff like that and, and try and make every line a punchline um, not just you know have a bunch of filler but even the personals are not just a personal about someone it's a, it's a punch I flip it somehow right so that's how I was able to advance in that some of my favorite people to battle um, 
And there was this dude named Catastrophic, which a bunch of you probably don't know. But uh, I battled him like five times. He was like my nemesis at one point. And uh, he never beat me. Catastrophic. Um, but uh, no, I battled Cheddar Cheese from uh, King of the Dot. I battled Big Cannon from Grind Time. I battled uh, this dude named Jolly J who's in Don't Flop. Um, those were all just uh, incredible battles, man. Um, battle the dude named Nimrod. That was a good battle. And I, I got to go against, uh, not in a battle sense, but in a bar for bar contest, this dude named Surgeon General who was on grind time was fortunate enough to win that one one time. It's been a great experience and actually helped get my name out there and skyrocket my abilities and people looking at me as far as a talent because sometimes that's what it takes. The, the music itself, like people like to say the music speaks for itself. Well, yeah, it does if people hear it. Putting yourself in that type of platform it brings people to you and then they explore the rest of your music afterwards if they're a fan. And that's what happened to me. And I got to the point where I don't really have to battle anymore and people just want to check it out. And, and uh, I'm, I'm super blessed by it. And, and learning all of that uh, that I forced myself to learn to battle, I use in my tracks. And that's why people like certain lines and it, it stands out. And I noticed uh, by, by learning all of those things, that your favorite rapper, the reason that that bar that you like, whether it gives you chills or it just makes you go, oh, damn, that was fucking sick. It's a poetic device and you can pinpoint what they're doing if you know how to do it. And at that point you can create any type of line anytime that you want to on the drop of a dime. That's it. I definitely gotta respect anybody that can do that format because being a battle rapper is very difficult. It's very high stress. Uh, you know, it's a very difficult thing to do that not a lot of people can do well. Now, other than the mic, which we all know, you ask this to any underground rapper, they're going to be like, instruments? I don't play instruments. I don't need to play no instruments. I play the mic. Yeah, microphone. Some stupid, <laughs> some stupid idiotic crap like that. Now you actually play some instruments. Which instruments do you play and how do you think they have impacted you as an artist? <laughs> yeah, I play, uh, I play piano and I play guitar. Uh, those are my main instruments. I play a little bit of bass and you know, I'll mess around on the finger drums <laughs> on the keyboard or whatever, but I can't, I can't play drums to save my life. They definitely impacted um, my ability um, as an artist, not just with other genres of music, but hip hop in general, because the way that I like to rap, I like to be in key with the beat. And I know a lot of people are thinking, what, what do you mean, you're a rapper? Like, but you have to be in key with the beat. You have to fit with it. You can't just rap over the beat. You know, your voice has to fit in that certain key signature that the beat is in, in that certain tone and that feeling. Um, and that's where delivery comes into a lot of plays. I like to harmonize with certain things. I like to sing on choruses and being able to play an instrument has allowed me to pick up on that and hear melodies that are in the music and put my voice to it. It's definitely, in my opinion, it's made my music a lot better, like a hell of a lot better, man. Now rumor has it, you're gonna be dropping a rock album. When can we see that released and do you have any rock groups or anything like that that you're planning on featuring on the album yeah man <laughs> definitely doing the rock album i don't have a release date as of yet i'm working on uh putting out lucid dreams 2.5 uh the mixtape i'm working on putting out the uh ep uh open door policy while trying to do that i'm i'm actively writing uh, for this rock album, rock slash alternative, I'm not really sure what to call it as of yet. Um, I've got about five songs written for it. Uh, I'm going to record two more uh, coming up shortly, and then I'm going to write two more after that. Um, I'm hoping by the end of the year, I'm shooting for at the latest, like a December release, because everything else is done. I just need to focus on that. As far as features, no, I mean, nobody that you would know probably. Uh, there is one song in particular that, uh, there's a band called Delta Spirit, look them up, they're good. I've known the dude, uh, two of the dudes in the band for 
a long time, and they made some music for this record. Just one song. Uh, it's called "All I All I Am." That's what it is. <laughs> and uh, they just they just destroyed it, man. It's the only song that has a rap verse in it. That's how unique this album is going to be. Is I really don't rap at all on it other than one song because it's a little bit more industrial and it gives that vibe off. My boy Ben, uh, who was on Red Wine on uh, Perception, might do some stuff on it if I can get him out here. Um, I'd like to, but other than that, nah, dude, it's, it's just all me and uh, my engineer. He plays anything that I can't. Fucking genius. I know I'm definitely going to be excited to hear that album. Uh, you know, I'm a big rock fan. Uh, a big rap fan, so the combination of the two is always great. I have had the the privilege of being able to listen to uh, two of your last projects and and a lot of other uh, just random tracks that you've made throughout the years. The two projects that I listened to kind of more in depth were uh, Lucid Dreams Volume 2 and Perception. Tell me a little bit about how you make the albums that you put out. Do you just randomly uh, make a bunch of songs and then based on what you made you kind of just group them together and, and that's your that's your album or Do you more or less come up with an idea or a thought and you really just expand on that and make just a bunch of songs and put that on a project? Um, yeah, as far as the process of, of putting together an album or whatever uh, Lucid Dreams 2 that you've heard the mixtape. Yeah, I make a bunch of tracks and um, Just listen to them all at the end and see what goes good together, what track should follow, which one, try to create a vibe and, uh, and a cohesiveness as far as the level of energy as it starts to when it finishes. Um, I try to match tempos a little bit so that the, the transitions are, are smooth. But yeah, I mean, with, with the mixtape, I mean, you're, you're looking at trying to hit a bunch of different remixes um, combined with some original music and so the sound is going to be kind of all over there so you gotta just go with what you did and and put it together and make it work and it, it turned out lovely as far as the album I have a little bit of a different process what I try and do is come up with an idea and a concept for the overall album right so perception that's the idea it's 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 your perception of of what I'm writing in my life and what I'm trying to it doesn't matter what I say because I could feel a certain way about it and you might get a completely different message it's up for interpretation that's what art is so I try and find different beats that have a certain vibe that I'm looking for I try and put everything together to fit that vibe and that tone it eventually comes out the way that I'm envisioning it and it matches with the content. It becomes a little difficult because I like to branch out and I do other things. I've got a song where I just sing completely and play piano and there's guitar on it and everything. I, I have a, another song with guitar that is a completely different sound than, than some of the other ones but they all seem to somehow fit together conceptually and it's a difficult process sometimes but I, I just like to make music, man. I don't like to be held down and be constricted by it needs to sound this way, you know, throughout. I want to make different types of music and I want to fit it all together. I want to showcase what I'm able to do and, and get my point across in different ways because sometimes certain emotions and feelings, in my opinion, require a different approach. You can't just fucking rap to rap, you know what I mean? You can't just do it like that man sometimes you gotta sing sometimes you gotta put it out there in a different way to evoke that feeling and that emotion i enjoy every second of it tell me a little bit about back when you were touring and and who you toured with and the, really the experience you had while doing that i man i've done so many shows let's see where, where do i begin i went on tour with like two mechs i done shows with everyone from DMX, Dilated Peoples, KRS-One, Strong Arm Steady, Pitbull, Most Def, Method Man, DJ Quick, and AMG, uh, Two Vibe Crew, the list is endless, man. I, I've done all these shows with these 
these different people all up and down the coast of uh, California. Done some shows in Vegas and stuff like that too. And it's been incredible, man. The the experience is unreal. I did a show with Crooked Eye and he took my mixtape and was like, dude, this is dope, blah, blah, blah. But you know, because I had uh, DJ L. Well and DJ Rampage uh, hosting the mixtape. And he was like, oh, dude, that, that's my boy. And I'm like, all right, cool, man. So I got to chop it up with him, spit for him. You know, and then perform my set, you know what I mean? And like stuff like that is cool. You would get off stage with DJ Quick and he's like, hey, you're loose logic, right? You know what I mean? The experiences are, you, you can't you can't beat that. You can't beat freestyling on stage with KRS One. Things like that, you can never take for granted, dude. Like I'll, I'll have that until I die. If I never make another song or never perform again, I'll have that. Every second of it, the highs and the lows, it's it's just amazing, dude. It's It's, it's awesome to go from city to city you know, just have that opportunity to meet new fans and, and see people, you know, run up to you and, and be excited that you're there. Like, I'm, why? Why are you excited for me, dude? You know what I mean? Like, who the fuck am I? But they're excited. They've been waiting. So it, it's, it's, a, it's a humbling experience to say the least, but it's also, it, it pumps you the fuck up, dude. It's like the best drug in the world. Now with the implementation of a lot of different social medias and, and a lot of different ways for people to, to get music out there, whether they're a serious rapper, a serious underground rapper, or, or just a hobbyist, how has social media really uh, evolved since you started making music so many years ago? Well, I mean, it, it's evolved in a major way. Um, when I first got online and started doing this. I mean, we, we only had AOL chat rooms, Yahoo chat, you know, like that was it. And then all of a sudden you have the forums, the forums came along, you got rap music, you got such and such forums, the forums were booming. Um, social media, the only thing that, that I had when I remember was uh, there was a site called Friendster. I wasn't even using it for music at the time. Um, and right as that site was was kind of going downhill, MySpace, boom, pops out. And that was a blessing. You know what I mean? Because you got to integrate music into it. I was able to get on the front page of MySpace for a couple of my releases, and they shared all that music. And that helped me a great deal, you know what I mean? And But the, the, the networking wasn't really there yet. So all of a sudden, here comes Facebook. And then here comes Twitter, and here comes Instagram. And that's where I took it to the next level. I mean, the way that you can post on one platform of social media and instantly share it throughout all your accounts is it's crazy dude it, it limits the time and you connect with so many more people it's just it's incredible there's also a downside to all this i mean there's the monetization of facebook now there's limiting of reaches it makes it very difficult for artists to get out there the other thing that makes it difficult there's so many people who spam now i mean they 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 were always spamming when you were in like chat rooms back in the day there was some dude that just posted his link like 257,000 times in 10 minutes and all you saw in the middle of a conversation was check me out check me out check me well that's happening now on facebook and twitter and you know i get all these messages Listen to this, check this out, blah, blah, blah. Well, it's ruining it for the people who are actually dope because there's so many shitty people out there. You don't check out the people who are good because you just assume that everyone fucking sucks. And so people who actually have talent get overlooked by people who could potentially help their career online at least and, and put them to a new level. And a lot of these contests and stuff are kind of the same way. It, it seems like, at least from what I've heard, um, you know, you, you got so many people entering, but then they have a predetermined like slot of this is how many people I'm actually gonna check out and fuck everyone else because they're not on time for that shit. Social media has advanced greatly and it's a huge tool and it's good if you want to market yourself. Market yourself, push yourself out there and use all the tools to your advantage rather than banking on one promotion or one shot, so to speak. Um, so I mean, yeah, I have mixed emotions about social media and, and its use to promote and help 
artist, but it, it's definitely a good thing. Do you feel that all these rappers should be out buying exclusive beats or, or even leasing beats? Uh, if so, when do you think a good time is to start doing that and, and how important is that? I think it's good if you want to sell something, you definitely need to buy or lease the beat because you should have ownership of that. Obviously, unless you make a ton of money, nobody's going to give a fuck. But it's, it's good for peace of mind and it's good for letterworks because you never know there might be a video game company, there might be a, a movie or a TV show that just happens to come across your shit and they're going to go, I want to use this and you're going to go, I don't own it. You know what I mean? So just for that simple fact, I would say anything that you do that's original, purchase it. Get yourself legal accountability so that you can use it and profit off of it in the future. Otherwise, you're gonna be fucked. Um, when you first start out, nah, I wouldn't buy beats. It's a waste of fucking time. I would learn how to make your own beats. Invest in that, because that's important. Um, that's what I did. That's what I started out doing, and then I got to a certain point to where I was like, okay, I feel like if I need to do it, I can do it, but I'm at the point now to where, yeah, I can pay somebody some money because I'm looking for a certain sound and maybe, maybe I can't create that sound. Maybe that's not my style. Maybe it's, you know, maybe this guy does it so perfect that I just want it from him. So, you know, but as far as mixtapes and stuff like that, anything you're going to give away for free, don't fucking buy anything. You're doing remixes for the most part anyways. Fuck it, right? Don't spend your money. And I know there's a bunch of producers or whatever that'll be out there, beat makers or whatever. Or, you know, you fucking you gotta buy this shit, don't listen to that guy, you're gonna be all pissed off. I mean, nah, whatever. If it's a mixtape, it's free, you're both benefiting off of it as long as you give them credit. Don't be that asshole that gives nobody credit. Give them credit, everyone benefits. Why would you buy something when you're giving it away for free? If you're gonna sell it, buy that. You know what I mean? Don't don't be a dick. It goes both ways. To up and coming artists, no, I, I I wouldn't buy beats. I would look for people that are gonna give away free beats or learn how to make your own. My advice. One thing that's really evident throughout your music is you really talking about your your family and your personal life. How does having a wife and a kid uh, impact your ability to make music? <laughs> it impacts it a lot, man. Um, the good side of things is it makes for a lot of new stories, makes for uh, some great music and some great concepts. Um, the bad part is, 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 is you got, and I wouldn't call it a bad part, but it makes it more difficult because you have somebody else to take care of now. You know, before I could go and hit a show, you know, three times a week, every week, um, and promote that and do what I had to do to do that and then hit the studio at any time of the day that I wanted to. Uh, because I had to make new music and this and that. Now, my time is limited. I get about one, maybe two days if I'm lucky a week to make music. But if you manage your time correctly, everything works out because I'm gonna have like four projects dropping this year. You know, I had a couple drop last year. I'm still doing other things on the side and making, uh, you know, doing verses for people and stuff like that. I work just as hard in those two days as other people do having seven days a week. Yeah, it limits, you know, it limits me and and things like that, but it's 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 probably one of the best things that's happened to me. It's 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 helped me get more focused and more um, critical of myself and my music because I have less time to do it so I'm more perfected when I do it. You know what I mean? Like I know that my time is more valuable now. I can't go to the studio and, and be drunk or whatever and, and just say, oh, fuck it, I'll come back and do it again, but this will be a rough, you know what I mean? No, I have to go there and get everything perfect by the time that I leave because I don't have time to go back there and do it again. So, I mean, that that definitely helps. Um, it just, you know, it makes doing shows and stuff a little more difficult and, and things like that and, and uh, doing certain things to promote because all my money being the sole provider, it goes to my family first. And I've had to, you know, there's been some opportunities that I've had to turn down. Uh, I got invited 
by uh, Cryptic Wisdom to go on tour with him. I had to tell him no, because like I said, being the sole provider, if I go on tour and stop working, then my daughter's gonna essentially starve. You know what I mean? Like I, I can't, I can't do that. Even though I'd make some money from the tour, it wouldn't be the same amount of money that I would make working because that money I made would fuel myself to continue touring, right? So things like that, yeah, it, it kind of sucks right now, but eventually that will all change. So I couldn't be more happy to have you know, have a family and be doing music because I, I get the best of both worlds right now. You know, I get to make music, I get to put it out there, people enjoy it, I get to enjoy my family, and that's awesome. Now you've been doing this for a long time. There has to have been some point where something just off the walls happened at a show and you had to come home and explain to your wife what happened and she probably lost her marbles. Do you have any stories similar to that that you'd like to share I have a lot of stories man um, <laughs> from you know obviously like pulling chicks on stage that all of a sudden want to try and like grind with you on stage or whatever coming off stage chicks trying to make out with you and and do whatever is say here's my number or come to my hotel room um, for the most part though my girl's there and so as long as I don't act on it she doesn't trip out that much, she just kind of laughs about it. When I opened up for DJ Quick, a bunch of dudes were getting in fights and decided that they wanted to fight the Long Beach PD, and so there was like a straight up riot inside of the venue. People were getting beat down. Uh, when I played with KRS-One, somebody got stabbed. You know, I, I did other shows. When I, when I was touring with two Max on this one show, some dude <laughs> that was performing got off stage and then bam you know beer bottle over the head like what like there i mean it's it's a trip dude I, <laughs> when i was playing with dmx he gets off stage when he's done he goes outside the cops are waiting for him they arrest him he left the state that he was supposed to be in when he was on probation so i mean there's there's tons of stories that are trippy but as far as like i think what you were getting at was like sexual things you know my, my girl's pretty cool about it i mean <laughs> the first the first show that she came to though one thing led to another so to speak and uh here we are with the child no <laughs> but i've known her for a long time so it's not it's not like a one you know it's not like that i've known her for a while now on a more serious note some of my favorite songs that you've put out have been all i ask an offering and one song really stood out to me and that was beautiful nightmare tell me about what inspired that song yeah, Beautiful Nightmare was, um, wow. That song is, give me a sec. All right, that song is about my ex-girlfriend who, um, had a problem with drugs. Uh, we had a problem with, uh, with drugs together, but uh, years after we broke up, you know, stay in contact or whatever, she ended up jumping in front of a train and committing suicide. So the whole story is real, it's true. Um, she's the accounts of it. And uh, you know, she, she texted me one night and I just ignored it. You know, because I knew what she wanted normally, at least I think. Um, she always wanted to hook up and I'm like, dude, I got a, I got a wife, I got a little baby girl. I can't deal with this right now, so I just, you know, click, ignore. Two days later, I look at the paper, and uh, she's gone, you know what I mean? So I'm always left with that what if. What, what, what if I could have saved her? But you know, I know I couldn't. I know it probably wasn't about that, but you know, I'm always left with that. So that that's what the song's about. That's what inspired it. Um, and the chorus was inspired by this girl that um, told me that she had uh, she had met Tupac one time, and Pac said to her, he said, "You'll be so beautiful when you grow up." 
And so I took that concept and applied it to the song and I said, she could have been so beautiful if she only grew up. I mean, that's, that's the long and short of it, man. Now, kind of going back on the topic of family, uh, the other song that really stood out to me was a song that you made for your daughter called Ava's Song. It, it <laughs> when I first heard it, it really sounds like like a, an, an 80s love ballad. It, it does not sound like a rap song at all. It it's just it's one of those very unique tracks on the project, and it's one of those things that just really catches you off guard. Tell me a little bit about the process of making that song. Uh, I wrote the song on the piano and I wrote the lyrics while I was playing the piano. Uh, my engineer actually played the guitar on that one. Um, I had written the, the piano parts and I had written the lyrics. So I went down there, I played the piano, I sang uh, like a rough uh, draft of it, just for the chorus actually. The, the only thing I had written was the chorus. I got a copy of that and I came back home and I wrote the rest of the song that night. Went back down there, recorded it, and then uh, we worked the rest of the, the music out based on the vocals. It, it came together pretty easily. I mean, the, the, the writing of it didn't take that long musically or, uh, you know, lyrically, uh, but the inspiration there was just, it was so real to me. I mean, I definitely teared up a lot while writing it, while recording it. Uh, listening back to it, it still gets me. I've made posts on Facebook about it, dude. I, I can't listen to that song without having some type of feeling because it's just that real to me. It, it just, it, it means a lot. And that's definitely a great song. It was definitely a great project. Um, it, everything that I, I've heard from you so far is just, there's always been a little bit for me in each project, you know. Um, those kind of songs really stand out to me. That's what I like in my music. But if that's not your thing and you're watching this interview, there's going to be a song in there for you somewhere. There's going to be multiple songs in there. You're really going to be able to get a lot from, from each project. Loose Logic, it, in 10 years, when your daughter hears your, your body of work, what do you think she'll say to you? In 10 years, if she listens to my music, I think that she will say, God, Dad, you're fucking embarrassing. No, <laughs> um, no I think she'll like it, dude. I mean, I, I, I play... Uh, some of my music for her now and she just she enjoys it um, I play her song the Ava song that I wrote for her and she'd be having throwing a fit crying whatever and it just calms her down she smiles she's, she gets into the car every time she gets into my car she goes play my song play my song you know what I mean so um, she loves it now but yeah I'm sure in 10 years she's gonna be like, you're fucking embarrassing dad I can't believe that you're a fucking rapper you're fucking you know what I mean <laughs> Hopefully she's not cursing like that. If you could go back in time, what is one thing that you think you would do differently that you feel would have bettered your career? If I could go back and do anything different to, uh, to change it, um, I guess I, there's not a lot that I could have done, man. Uh, maybe try to invest some more money earlier on maybe taking some more opportunities that I felt weren't really there, but maybe they could have helped me. I don't regret anything that I've done or not done. I'm sure that there's something I could have done to put me to a better place, but uh, I'm, I'm happy where I'm at right now. Loose Logic, I really appreciate you taking the time to do this with me. Um, you know, like I said, I, I really enjoy your music. I really think that other people out there need to hear your music. I really wish that we could get you on a bigger platform for more people to hear it because I really feel that the more people that hear it, the more it's going to catch fire and the more people that are going to just continue to build and build and build with you moving forward. Um, tell us a little bit about where we can find your music and more importantly, where people can buy your music. Yeah, you can find my music um, a lot of places, dude. All over YouTube, um, Bandcamp, Datpiff. Uh, I don't know, you can Google it. Uh, but you can buy it on um, Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, Rhapsody, eMusic, uh, plenty of other places. I think you can buy it on uh, Pandora. I think they have a, a way to buy it. Um, but I'm on Pandora as well. Go add your loose logic station, motherfuckers. One last question for you. I don't know how much you watch this vlog, but if you could change one thing about another day in the underground, 
what would it be? I wouldn't change a mother, excuse me. I wouldn't change a damn thing. Either way, it's a curse. Sorry, Joe. No, I wouldn't change anything, man. You keep it real. You speak on topics that you feel are important and you're passionate about. I get a kick out of everything you do, man. So I think you're doing it right, dude. I mean, it, it's it's uh, it's a humble setting. Yeah, dude, I, I wouldn't change anything unless you want to, you know, spend some money and go crazy. <laughs> but uh, no, I, I think it's great, dude. Once again, everybody, that was Loose Logic. Go out there, buy his album, buy his music. If you're able to support him in that way, if you're liking the music, go ahead and do that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that I put in the description below links directly to where you can purchase that music, uh, connect with him on social media and things like that. Um, if you have any questions for Loose Logic, feel free to comment them in the, the comments below here. Um, feel free to hit him up on Facebook. Pretty open guy. He's not one of those people that are going to blow you off when you send him an inbox. Act all Hollywood on you. Don't be afraid to do that. Thank you guys for watching. It's just another day in the underground. My name's Joe K. Uh, if you guys have any ideas for future episodes, feel free to comment them below as well. Uh, or hit me with the inbox message uh, via Facebook at another day in the underground or it's Joe K Music. I don't want people to be forgotten about and have all these people that make great music get absolutely no attention. If you know of an underground rapper who you feel is really being overlooked, feel free to send me their contact information. I would love to be in contact with them, uh, listen to some of their music, and, and see what we can do about getting him on an interview just like this one. My parents didn't really want me in a life cause of our past together. If they could see the future, maybe they would have me near us. I knew she was cutting the blood, felt like a release as it ran down the skin while the tears stained the cheeks. The one night I got a text like, what's up? what's up? I got a daughter and a wife, so I shrugged and deleted that bitch. Three days later, I read the news and just believe her the shit. Around 10 p.m., she went down to the track. She had a mind.